I don't have friends. I got family. Family, family. Family. You can have any brew you want, as long as it's a Corona. Family, family. Family. This just went from Mission Impossible to Mission and Freaking Sanity. The movies. <laughs> Screech! I don't know why I keep breaking when I, we're I'm doing preparing this, for but... your Screech now after that. Yeah. So. I feel like I need to. It's 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 a weekly occurrence now. It is a weekly occurrence every Friday because this is yeah, Fast Friday. We're backstage at Bluebird. What? what? This is Fast Friday. I'm Andrew Jones. I'm your family. With me as always is me familiar, Johnny Ellis. Hello. Hello. And with us today is another special member of the family. It's Katie Smith Wong. Hello. Hey. Hey, thank you. Oh, it's exciting to have you here. Thank you very much. How do you feel about the Fast and Furious franchise? Are you? Really, I'm, exci- really I'm excited to see. I'm excited for the next instalment. So uh, you know, watching Fate and the Furious just reminds me how uh, how fun they are. So it's, it'll be nice to go back and get back into the cinema and watch the um, the series continue. Oh, so you're excited about the movies? Yes, I am, <laughs> I am excited about the movies. You know, there's you, there's all there's all the you know thing about the Fast and Furious films. They always bring that sense of you know nonsensical sense um <laughs> feeling of fun that is always unique to cinema and it's it's not something that can be easily recreated so i think that's why the fast and furious furious films are always so popular i mean they've made a, a netflix animated show but i don't think that's anywhere near as important to the franchise no unless uh, Dwayne, unless dwayne johnson or james statham make an appearance i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, but the line's going to be a different of pixels. It's a lot of pixels. <laughs> <laughs> That's think... a lot of bald heads to create. Uh, like I said, a lot of pixels. <laughs> <laughs> I think this um this instalment in particular was the one that really hit me. Of like, Jesus Christ, look how far we've come from the first one. Look how ridiculous we've we've gotten. With the massive um, submarine, but we'll get there. We'll, but we'll get there because yeah. we're talking about. <laughs> I, I, have a lot, I have a lot. Of, I have a lot of feelings about that, but we'll get to it <laughs> when we when prompted. In, in an hour's time, we'll discuss submarines. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> but now it's we're talking the fate of the furious here, yes. the 2017 instalment directed by F. Gary Gray, mm-hmm. but still written by Chris Morgan. You can't get him off <laughs> until you know. I guess the Fast Saga where. Things are going off the rails at this point. <laughs> so, basic elements. Uh, ten uses of the word family. Oh, right. right. Instead, <laughs> instead of Corona, we've got Budweiser's. I'm not happy about you. this. No, that's not right. <laughs> and that's our episode. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I, cu- I couldn't see much brotherhood in this one. I think it's like uh, Owen and Deckard Shaw are the best you can say for brotherhood. Well, given, given, given what happened like you know, behind the scenes, all the rumours and stuff, that you don't think much brotherhood was kind of really instilled yeah but roman and tej always had like a good brotherhood going on and it just yeah, doesn't they don't really much. use that in this one no it was there was not enough screen time to ded- dedicated to them no considering mm. it's uh the longest in the franchise at this point not enough screen time dedicated to some of the important members of the family <laughs> tej's hair short roman's bald dom's <laughs> bald hobbs is bald deckard's bald <laughs> What are you saying? Oh, we, we just go through the uh, increasing baldness of the franchise. <laughs> These are key components. This is a very bald-leaning yeah. franchise. Yeah, and we the, celebrate boldness, it. the boldness is as imperative as the number of, of vests that are exactly. being worn. Yeah. you got to get those nice stringy vests. And I think, I think the poster for this one had like Jason Statham facing one way, Dwayne Johnson facing another way, and Vin Diesel facing a third way, just so you can see all angles of bald head. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was what that literally was the whole look. Well, I think, I think we're celebrating. Quite, I think there were various posters actually because uh, it's like there, you know, there is one on Wikipedia that you have Vin Diesel on his own, and then you have the rest of them oh, in another yeah. graphic. So it kind of it so so it visualizes the separation between them. The, the deconstruction of family. Yeah, it's no longer family. <laughs> Yeah, I'd completely forgotten the the main plot of this one. Uh, I think I'd only have seen it the once when it came out in cinema. Um, to each other, like wow. Yeah, I com- yeah I completely forgot where where this goes. Um, but why why don't you kick us off? Well, we open this time with a Universal logo, but no fanfare. Mm. It's a quiet opening. Ironic, so, seeing seeing as like the Fast Furious would are never quiet. <laughs> 
No, they they kind of utilize the soundscape to make it loud. Loud. <laughs> and this is quiet, and then some Cubana music comes in, and uh, we're in Havana, everybody. Mm-hmm. Some old cars, but they got new they got new engines in them. One of them got a boat engine. <laughs> Which basically, does that make it like a, a car boat? Can it, can it go on water? See, at first, I thought this was going to be how, like, oh, you're scamming us. You've put a, a boat a boat engine in this car. Screw you. But then it was dumb, just goes, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, you know, it's, 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 you know, the size of the cars and the size of the motors and how, like, how can you afford a really decent engine for the, that kind of car? In Havana, so you know you you make you make do with what you have. Yeah, and you swim out to a yeah. boat and steal it. Yeah. As you know, it's not about all that. It's about who's driving. And who is driving? Who is driving? It? Um, <laughs> I've forgotten his name now. But I'm sure you've got it down in your multiple notes. It doesn't matter who's driving because that's just some random stuff. Because hey, Dom's cousin's car's getting towed. Yep, that's a crappy car. <laughs> it is. A, it, it, it's a rusty old clap trap. And, and and Dom's coming over. He's like, you know what? I understand. You know, Toretto's, we do what's right. And he says this car is systematic. What is it? Hydromanic. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's grease lightning, isn't it? <laughs> it basically is. It looks like it's about to go through a massive kind of. I was waiting for. I was waiting for them to go into the um into the weird, nice clean um. Music video like a uh, garage to turn it into grease lightning. <laughs> well, this is an investment of an idea. What if Fast and Furious offer musical numbers? That's I all it's that, missing. I think that's just branching the universe into a whole other genre that's just going to make that's just calling for further installments. <laughs> I don't see, I don't actually, you know, see Vin Diesel and Hop and Tells doing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know he's a great singer he loves his songs his music has been inspiring us since september last year <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's only perfect it's only perfect time for him to prepare us for his own musical based on dungeon and dragons experiences oh if only if only i mean that would make musical month next next year just i, I don't know how we'd be able to top it after that we won't. Anyway, the the guy who's uh, demanding the tow is uh, a bit mean to Letty, and that means Dom gets angry and demands a race. Yeah, you never be mean to Letty. Yeah, no, no. Dom's okay with anything, but if you start, you know, putting your hand up and saying, "Hey, shut up," ooh, he gets angry. He <laughs> I did love that moment, car. which is like, "Oh, now you're really screwed." <laughs> now you're really screwed. Dom offered up his car for the race, and the Cuban guy demands that Dom drive some rusty car instead. It's like, yeah, yeah, you, well, I'll take your car, but you know. You've got to drive that shit box. <laughs> so, as we've seen already, Dominic rips off the metal body of that car. Yep. Puts in some Nos, some Cuban Nos. <laughs> Cuban Nos. man's turbo. <laughs> which, uh, it's going to be a bomb. <laughs> and then you have a nice, nice big old race. Like, it is a damn good race. Well, it's like the, the guy in question, it's like, you don't even know who's like, have you not seen what he can do with your <laughs> motors? It's like, dude, come on. You know, you know you're going to lose. Just, yeah. just, just pay. Just, just leave. Just settle the debt and move on. You're not going to be humiliated. <laughs> I always, I do always wonder when they're hanging out with like uh, normal people, like at race wars or whatever, um, how much these people know about Dom and the family, and like, are there rumors or or do people like, do people know the exact ins and outs, and just people just talking? Oh, did you remember when they dragged that safe? Okay. Um, Geographically, I, you know, I think it's like well, you got to that point now in the series where they just they do, people don't care about their <laughs> their you know their hero not hero kind of activities and just like they 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 kind of forgotten about the whole drug racing uh, uh, <laughs> history. They just and it's just like, are you really that good? Because I, you know, we haven't seen anything recently. That kind of <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, Los Angeles doesn't forget. Yeah. Dominican Republic, Toretto made his name when he went down there for four years. <laughs> when they got to Brazil, he when he got down to Brazil, everyone knew who he was. So I was like, yeah, we know who you are, but, you know, I think we're better than you. And it turns out they're not. <laughs> London, no one really cared. 
So I, I knew yeah, York, because, obviously, yeah, no one notices. He was racing Letty, wasn't he? So, and Letty didn't even remember how good he was. So it's like... Yeah. <laughs> That's harsh. That is harsh. <laughs> but true. <laughs> but true. I'm not going to deny the truth. Uh-huh. The truth will set us free. <laughs> So they're racing through Havana, and uh, both the uh, Cuban guy and Dom have some people on motorbikes stopping traffic for them. Yeah. Dom's got his cousin and Letty on these motorbikes. It's nice that they've thought ahead. It for, is. For safety, you know, because, you know, with the other races, they just kind of speed through night, uh, empty streets and stuff like that. That's fine. But at least or, kind or of if it's in Tokyo, to... not empty streets. Oh, yeah, that's true. The Sorry. crowd just <laughs> pass, let through in a big old drip. But at one point, the guy's getting so angry that Don might win that he tells uh, his guy to ghost him. And so they throw a motorbike at the car. <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's just an indication of that he's not actually qu- not actually confident either. No, he knows he can't win. Yeah. Unless he <laughs> tries to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> By trying to kill a guy. <laughs> a guy who has so far remained so unkillable that planes, trains... <laughs> Automobiles <laughs> and, a t- and a tank <laughs> haven't stopped him. Yeah, <laughs> he's been crashed under a parking lot and he survived. <laughs> he's been shot. Even though street always wins. The street always wins. That's the thing about the street bike. Don't know if you knew that, Katie. <laughs> street always wins. <laughs> but Dom hits the turbo. His car goes in flames, and he has to do a one eighty and go in reverse the rest of it. Which is so cool. Like, it's a good way of getting the flames out of your face, but if you've got a turbo and suddenly you've got to reverse on that, it doesn't yeah. Hand, yeah. Your tires, your tires must be really. Also, I have the thing is that if the t- turbo is at the back of the car and you're going reversing, sure, surely it just not doesn't work as well. No, no, exactly. You know, you're now face- you're not fighting off against what you've just set off. <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, well, good luck to you, mate. I guess. <laughs> but, hey, he wins by nose. <laughs> It's so stupid, but I love it. It's good. He wins. He gets out of the car. Wait, what? Uh, no brakes. Oh, uh, yeah. No brakes. Oh, no. Oh, I, no. What will he do? It's a good I job at the this. end of the race yeah. is by the shoreline. <laughs> See, I thought, about what, yeah. oh. I thought he was going to drive down the shoreline, and during that long stretch, a massive wave was going to crash over and get rid of the, the fire for him. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, was I was actually thinking that, that because when they got to the shoreline, they, you could see the waves. Right yeah, they had a the shot air. of a wave going over them. I was expecting him to, like, you know, just drive by the shore and just get doused by the, the waves and then you know, don't have to worry about it, you know. It's, it's kind of like Mad Max, Max Fury Ray. They had, a, you know, they had something to douse the flames. Mm. So yeah. I thought this would just be a cooler way of doing it, but no, he just... Just carries on. Yeah. Just carries on. Jumps out of the car. <laughs> flies in the air and explodes. <laughs> and then kids come and run around up to Dom and celebrate him. Yep. And it's just another Saturday. <laughs> just just another regular Saturday in Havana where Dominic Toretto is surrounded by a bunch of kids. Yep. <laughs> and that he's like noticing, he's like, oh, kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is the b- Beyond Thunderdome of the films, right? <laughs> These are the Lost Boys. Yeah, yeah, Tina Turner turns up for some reason. And they're like, we don't need another member of the family. <laughs> so Dom wins. And the guy's like, here's my car. Oh, God. Yeah. And my, you have my respect. <laughs> Dom doesn't want the car. He respects wants... all he needs. Yeah. And, and then he gives his car to his cousin. <laughs> Your car was too slow for a Toretto anyway. <laughs> And then the title comes up. That's when we get the title. <laughs> That's our prologue. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the whole all I need is your respect. I don't need the car. I'm like... Well, if you think about it, is that if he, he were to keep every car that he, of every racer he's won, he's going to need more than a, you know, like a multi storage car park kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, some sort of skyscraper which has just infinite cars. Everywhere. Yeah. It yeah. should be useful in the next, and you know, later on. Or well, maybe he'll just, maybe when they get to the moon in F9 The Fast Saga, they'll find out that actually, yeah, uh, that's where they parked all the cars. Yeah. <laughs> Dominic Toretto owns the moon. <laughs> I just, I just wonder if this has sort of started a trend 
for people to go, have you, have you raced Dom Toretto yet? Because it's so fun. And you don't even have to give him your car at the end. <laughs> like, you won't win, but it's just for the experience. You just, just tell him you respect him. He'll like that and you walk away. Yeah, but you do end up getting, you know, dragged into helping him save the world at some point. True. Yeah. So is it worth racing just so just so you put in harm's way, possibly if something goes wrong with that? Well, it'll, be, it'll be a it'll be a great thing to put on Twitter. Helps help Dom Toretto save the world once. <laughs> <It's> like... <Yeah. laughs> Hashtag family life. Yeah. It's like a weird monkey's paw. You don't I didn't need your car, but I will call upon you to uh, be a bit um be a bit dangerous and have to help me save the world at some point. He's the godfather. In the future. Yeah. He's Don Corleone here. And he's, you know, it's his daughter's wedding and he's going to ask a favour at some point. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you are. He'll, you know, he'll pay for the flight. <laughs> I mean, he'll get him on Roman's plane. Oh, yeah. He'll fly the jet from Furious 6. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Never forget the iconic It's Roman Bitches plane. <laughs> Letty and Don are in bed. Yep. And they're wondering what a daddy Don would look like. <laughs> Let's not pregnant, but it's like, what would you be like if you were a father? We'll never know. We'll never know. But the <laughs> important thing is that I don't know if you know about Dom. Is that memories about fatherhood? Letty doesn't remember <laughs> anything, but uh, Dom, I remember everything about my father. <laughs> <laughs> and this is when um, uh, uh, elusive cyber terrorist named Cipher returns. Apparently, yeah, according to Wikipedia here. With some very weird looking dreads. Uh, we, yeah, we have uh, the first of uh, two actresses in this film who raised the Academy Award winning stakes of this film and this franchise by, I believe, 200%. <laughs> <laughs> the overqualified Charlize Theron is having trouble with her car. That's how you get him. That's how you get him. Dom's walking <laughs> by, he's got a nice tote bag and the French stick popping out. That Anna Rose. Like he's Anna Rose. Like Anna Rose. Forget. You're right. Yep. <laughs> like he's got. A, he's got a nice evening planned. <laughs> but he's obviously he has a car in trouble. When the car's <laughs> calling to him, and he runs miles into, away, runs into a phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> what would be his superhero name then? Family. Family man. Family, family man. Family, family guy. Nick Cage. <laughs> <Family> <laughs> Oh no! Oh, that 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 um, yeah. <laughs> Every episode starts with him and Letty at the piano. Oh, I don't know why Baby Brian's got a uh, British accent, but who cares? <laughs> oh, would Brian be the baby or like, Brian who, be the dog? <laughs> who's Baby Brian, Johnny? Oh well, yeah. Well, sorry, we'll get there. <laughs> we we know Baby Jack. Yeah, we love Baby Jack. We obviously know uh, Nico. Because Dominic Toretto's got his eyes on him. Yep. <laughs> but Cypher is like, yeah, he know, she knows that Dom's in Cuba for the honeymoon. He made sure that every step of his walk was pushed in the direction of where they just met. Without him ever noticing all the various traps were in place. She's got everything planned out to make sure that this meeting happened. Oh, yeah. And she hands him a phone and says, oh, you're going to want to work for me. Your team is going to go up against the only thing they can't handle. My Tinder profile. <laughs> Look at it on my phone here. <laughs> and, it's so, and it's a profile so big, you need to t- turn the phone <laughs> sideways. You can't even, it's more than just swiping left and right. <laughs> You've got to go landscape mode. <laughs> now we cut, of course, to the most important character of all this franchise at this point. Luke Hobbs. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's giving a big old speech. It's loud, oh, yeah. it's passionate. Yep. Talking to his team because he's such a um, workaholic as we found out in his first appearance. To a team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a workaholic. We know that he doesn't stop doing his focus on bringing people to justice. Uh, it's a girl's soccer team. <laughs> Are we going to pull a hacker in front of the opposing team because he's yep. crazy and it's his daughter's soccer team? Because the... as much as, as important as family is, team is more important in this film, by the way. They don't with, even... with all the soccer, with all the the mums, yeah, okay. <laughs> he is the coach, and he stands on the sidelines, and all these soccer mums look over to him and make gooey gooey yum yum faces. 
And the hacker doesn't even uh, scare the other team. It just weirds them out so much so that one of the girls just goes, I don't want to play anymore. This is just weird. This yeah. is odd. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not weird. It's not, not the fact that it's like, oh, I don't want to play them. They're scary. It's the weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, how effective are your hacker? Then? It's just. It's oh, racist. We have, to re- we have to rethink about this. It's, it's. It's. She doesn't care about anyone else's culture, so she's stepping back. <laughs> how dare you know what this girl? She's going to grow up to be a princess and Ellie Kemper style beauty. <laughs> <laughs> But then he gets interrupted during the uh, uh, match. DS Allen, I made a note of the name. Never said. Never said. Never mentioned in the film. (laughs) DS Allen is this guy. He comes over to Hobbs and says there's a machine that, uh, a device that will create an instant Stone Age. And it's on the loose. The US government cannot sanction anyone sending anything into Berlin to get it. But uh, if Hobbs gets gets caught, he's going to go to prison. But they need it back. So it's something work-related, which means that Hobbs is instantly going to Go straight into work and have he's a workaholic. Drop. He doesn't yeah, care. Yeah, he's a workaholic. Yeah, the frown he, goes. He, yeah, the frown. The frown is on by this point. He's get, he's no longer he's no longer coach mode. He's in like D, DSS mode. Yeah, that's what you'd expect, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, no. He's he's obsessed with this football match, and he tries to get his. Is it his boss? It's I a random like agent. Yeah. It's, it's not a really agent. a specific. He gets it's, the it's DS Allen. We all know DS, DS Allen. Sorry, I've forgotten the name already. Um, <laughs> D- uh, he gets DS Allen to, to cheer the group before he does anything. Yeah, <laughs> and you can uh, see the, the enthusiasm in his voice is just um, commendable. <laughs> but in fairness, Baby Hobbs does get a goal, so it worked. Yeah, and that's Perfect. the point. But that, and that's the point where you know that his job is done. <laughs> his his little girl gets the goal for the exactly. team. Of course, she's a striker. Of course, she's not out there doing midfield. <laughs> she comes she's over. She's not on the sidelines. Just and he yeah. just waits until his daughter gets one goal and then just makes the referee end the game. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> just walks yeah. up to him and just like yeah. stares at her. Him really, I've done my job. She's done mine. Let's go for Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> but his daughter runs over. I guess. Daddy's got to go to work. Really sadly. <laughs> what, what, what a shame. Yeah. Dom grabs a call from Hobbs. I'll grab the team, he says. Not family, he goes, I'll grab the team. Oh, I didn't even think about that. There's a lot of times in which they use the word team in this film. Right. It's confusing. It's kind of like they're trying to say, hey, you know what? The family's done. You think it's like a different, like on WhatsApp, you got one for team and one for family. What if you were to put like the message, like we got, a, we've got a job and the wrong thing. Is it? <laughs> but then suddenly that's you. when Brian turns up again, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't need you. <laughs> you all this message. Why did you delete this message? Oh, it was for someone else. Well, I want to know what is it. <laughs> see, that's, you see, you know. Oh God, Leo and Santos are here. What are we going to do with them? They just keep squabbling at each other. Yeah, it's like, oh, for God's sake, I wish you'd just put the, put the message in the right bloody WhatsApp chat. <laughs> Wait a second, it says message received by Han. How is that possible? <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> the, 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 the possibilities are endless here. <laughs> so we're coming to Berlin, and immediately there's just a bunch of explosions. They're already, they're already bursting out of a building with the cars... They've got the EMP already. Everything's already been done. It's like the beginning of, of Avengers 2. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Avengers 2. Yeah. They're already in the middle of a mission. What's his, uh, what's his full name? Uh, Age Age of Ultron. Ultron. That Thank was you. It. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I know how Use correct like your title. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you got Marvel film. You don't want to antagonise Marvel films. Yeah, <laughs> so let's exactly. carry on talking Marvel about Fast and Furious 8. Yeah. <laughs> They're being chased by a bunch of... Uh, German cops, I guess. I didn't know they had them. <laughs> what? Well, they don't have police in Berlin. No, I didn't think they had police. I thought they just, you know, they were. It's mili- I think it's military police. They're in oh. a mili- military site. That, that makes sense. The military needs police. <laughs> but Tej has a plan. It's a plan B. <laughs> Roman's like, what? We, do I hope we've got plan B, C, D, E? Brad Pitt's office. producing this movie? It is a, it's, a, it's a Brad Pitt and previously. Jennifer Aniston produced <laughs> Wrecking Ball. 
that comes and smashes half of them. Yeah. But only Which half is of quite them. fun. Oh no. What's going to happen? Well, what comes up must come down. <laughs> so this thing swings by and crashes the rest of them, and it's got a smiley face painted <laughs> on the back of it. <laughs> Who set nice that up? It's a nice yeah. touch. That is, that is Batman making the uh, fire emblem on the side of the bridge oh, for rescuing all the police. So the last thing that you want to see before you're being mangled or injured by a humongous wrecking ball is a big smiley face. <laughs> it cushions the blow a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon that translates into German, a smiley face? Well, you know, if it's an emoji, then never, it's a universal language. <laughs> All we know is that, um, you know, yet again, Forrest Gump isn't making the money he should be making off that symbol. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh, I forgot that. Uh... <laughs> but, you know, shit happens. <laughs> Forrest Gump's a universal picture. Yep, it's going to be in Fast and Furious 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to outrun all of the family. <laughs> Oh, man, I want that now. <laughs> <laughs> so the team's split up. Dom and Hobbs go one way and the rest of the team go the other. And then Dominic Toretto crashes into Hobbs' car? I feel like even if, he wasn't, even if he wasn't um, uh, being... Um, uh, even if he wasn't working for the other side, he'd probably still do that. <laughs> <laughs> Like an improv from Vic. Just a little playful uh, tap. I, I, oh. I don't want you holding this. I want, I want the thing. Yeah, I, 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 want, I want the big old EMP. <laughs> Plus, you know, so if I have the thing, I'll always be in front. <laughs> You've held it for five minutes. Now I hold it for five minutes. You know how the rules go. <laughs> so John drives off with the EMP. Hobbs is left there to get caught. And he calls the team and tells them, Dominic Toretto just went rogue. Dun, dun, dun. Dom gets on a, on a runway as the cops are chasing him, and a plane comes down, opens its uh, ramp up, he drives up, and it goes back up again without really touching down. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, that's a bit exciting. Yeah. And, and quite a and bit like deja vu, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's now, he has now become the Owen Shaw of the group. <laughs> yeah. Team. Family. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore, it seems. Lenny's there looking at a picture of her and Dom. Tesh can't find out who he's been talking to. Ramsey confirms there's like encryptions on the other end, so it's someone big, techie, and very important. And then we see Hobbs. Well, now in Hobbs an is, jumpsuit yeah. and chains. Hobbs is going to be going to prison, and there's no way they can get him out. There's no way. He's in a CIA detention and facility. And he's all alone. And he's so. not all alone because he's being met by Mr. Nobody right at the gates. Yeah. Remember so Mr. He's, Nobody? He's, he's alone because nobody. nobody's there. And here comes Little Nobody, you're right. <laughs> little Nobody. Little Nobody himself. Yeah. Little Scotty Eastwood. <laughs> a valuable yeah, asset Scott to the Eastwood. franchise. Yeah. Yep, memorable. Yeah. Important. <laughs> yeah. Sure. He's certainly on screen. <laughs> you can't <laughs> doubt that uh, can't, there can't are frames of him spliced <laughs> into this picture. Yeah. And he does get picked up by, um, well, by Hobbs. Hobbs has offered his freedom if he confesses to being a traitor. He will yeah. get blacklisted, but Mr. Nobody's going to hire him because he knows Hobbs is very good. But Hobbs is like, I'm, I'm not a criminal. I'd never agree to that kind of thing. And then little Nobody decides to go like, hey, you've got a daughter. Think about her. What's important for her? And so what happens, Johnny? He picks him up and pins him right against the wall sideways. Which is... Sideways? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Who I'd sign yes up for the film job. just for that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But if you're if you're an Eastwood, <laughs> if you're if you're if you're literally a nobody, it's like, wow, this is an opportunity to be on screen, and I get picked up by The Rock and pinned sideways on a building. Great. But if you're an Eastwood, and you're trying to, you know, impress Daddy. Oh yeah, Dad's Dad's disowned him at this point. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> 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 Oh. oh god He's not allowed to walk into the Mount Paso building whatsoever <laughs> oh. Wow That's so that's, that's that why um... That went dark real real quickly It's pretty but it's like <laughs> That's why Clint had the um the scene With the uh, the two women in The mule Wait, which Just, one? To, which just to show Scott <laughs> Oh yeah there were multiple weren't there There were two but, scenes yeah. 
just to show his son, this is how an East would act, damn it. Does Clint oh. Eastwood cry? He, 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 I think he'd rust if he did. I, I, I think if he cried, he'd probably cry macho out in theatres later this year. Wow. Well, you know that's what his next film's called, the one he's, he's starring in again. I do now. Oh, I'll look out for it. Yeah, aren't we all excited? He's back in front of and behind the camera in Cry Macho? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> So, in prison, Hobbs is walking past all these criminals who he seems to have put there. Yeah. And then he finds out uh, his cell is opposite. <gasps> Deckard Shaw? <laughs> they need good neighbours in prison. Oh. <laughs> Deckard obviously reminds him neighbors. there's uh, yeah. 30 feet of concrete between him and the outside, which was a callback to Furious 7. Yeah. And then calls him a Hercules, remember? Remember he played yeah. Hercules? So yeah. That's a joke. And then he calls him a wanker. <laughs> It's such a British thing to say, though. Being yeah. called a wanker. <laughs> he, he also does the jerk off motion in the hands as well, just to really have it home. It's like, Jesus, he's he's really going for it in this first moment. Well, you know, it's his first scene in this big film, and you need to kind of solidify what's going to happen next. So, he, and, you know, might he's as well just like five minutes of screen time he hasn't been on. So, <laughs> exactly. So, if you're going to be able to intimidate someone like. Wayne Johnson, you just have to go for it. So we get onto Cypher's plane here. Oh yeah, this is exciting. We see Rhodes. He's the uh, the big guy from Game of Thrones. Yes. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. I haven't watched it. But carry on. <laughs> That's that can be annoying because I got a lot of trivia specifically about Game of Thrones <laughs> that I was going to ask you. Oh, then then I'm, I'll uh, I'll be quiet then. <laughs> <laughs> So your eyes up, Dobby, they're like uh, two alphas up against each other type situation. And then Cypher starts to peel off every wall of the plane to show that there's guns everywhere. It's a, it's a bit of a crazy armory, this place. Mm. That comes to important things, of course. And then she wonders why Don didn't kill the guy in Cuba. Because he believes he can change a person with positivity. And that's exactly what he's going to do with Cypher. <laughs> Smile, Cypher. Smile. Blink cypher. God, it <laughs> just really pissed me off. Change your hair, do you, cypher? <laughs> yeah, this seems really weird, cypher. <laughs> but we're back in the prison. Because we need to see Luke Hobbs punching a cement wall. <laughs> and Shaw is like, ah, you're weak, aren't you? Is that what you can do? So Hobbs rips. A giant desk off the wall and starts doing lifts. I thought it was yep. a bench. Or my, was, a bench? I think it was a bench, yeah. Is it a bench? It looked like a desk because it was way too, it was well, way too short to you. What does he need a desk for? <laughs> for writing letters to the parole board saying, hey, I'm not a traitor. And also <laughs> this guy also keeps calling me a wanker in the middle of the night. And it's, weird. <laughs> it's hurting my feelings. <laughs> well, I'm disappointed if it's a bench. I'm pretty it's, sure it's, it's, it's too tall to be a bench. You're probably right, but you know, mm. it's, a, 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 it's it's very weird <laughs> for what it is. He, he rips out of the, uh, out of the wall. Of course, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it it's seems just something. It's just kind weird. of put intentionally to see Dwayne Johnson rip out a concrete piece Slab. of stone. Yeah, something concrete out of the wall, and then Maybe... start doing crunches with it. Whatever. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just a part of... Maybe it's just the wall and he's managed to somehow Stinkle. somehow hollow out a piece that is, like, right-angled <laughs> and just looks perfect for a bench or a desk. And he just did it with his fist. Sure, That's... kindly reminds Hobbs of how he beat his ass in the office in Furious <laughs> How he needed a woman to come and help him out. God and forbid. Hobbs was, Hobbs was like, ah, you used bombs, you were cheating. On a one-on-one -on -one fist fight, we see who wins. I would beat your ass like a Cherokee drum. Yeah. And then the doors open. It is almost as if it was planned. <laughs> and Hobbs is looking at the camera and is like, no, Mr. Nobody, I'm not going to do this. And then the prison riot starts. So of course he's going to have to start fighting all these people. And Shaw's sure. like, oh, fuck it, I'm going to run. Well, Shaw's, Shaw's door doesn't open. He opens his door himself with the, um, the electric stick thingy. So it's like... 
all right, if this was planned, fair enough. But they just went, we'll open Hobbs's door and we'll let Shaw figure out <laughs> figure out for himself. I don't know, it just made me think. Go on. It just, well, why do they help um, Hobbs out? If they want Hobbs and Shaw to fight together, it's, it, they're giving Hobbs uh, an advantage already, which... Maybe Shaw would know if uh, if he was coaxed. He had to prove his worth because he's uh, he's that kind of person. Maybe. Anyway, they're facing up to each other after a bit of an action sequence where they're running around, and they're about to they're about to punch each other when Mister Nobody walks in. And we got to know And by the way, the the use of rubber bullets was ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) It's like being hit with a Nerf gun. You're in this high, high, you know, this maximum security prison, and you're going to stop these people who have been hardened. They really, they're, they're quite physically fit, and you're going to hit them with plastic bullets. Really? <laughs> when you say hit with a Nerf gun, you mean the Nerf bullets or the actual Nerf guns? Because those plastic things bullets. are pretty okay. <laughs> if it was the power of a Nerf gun, I'm like, yeah, that actually. I don't know. I haven't seen Nerf guns recently. I mean, I just just imagine being having a pretty hefty piece of plastic thrown at your face. Yeah, still ineffective. <laughs> ineffective, but a bit like, oh, I'll, I'll second guess myself for a minute. I'll at least dodge. Well, it would still be ineffective for um, Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, but it's a, at least it's like you could, yeah, you could have the rubber bullets, but at least have like a step up. If you yeah. if you shoot no the rubber bullets is still going to be ineffective. Don't continue shooting them with rubber bullets. They're still not going to they're not going to miraculously hurt them second time round. <laughs> maybe if they had guns which shot out some electrical charges, like tasers, yeah. Maybe mm. or, or maybe grapply hooky things from Too Fast Too Furious. Oh, we need those guns back, damn it! <laughs> they were so cheesy and awful. I loved them. Well, you know, we've got Fast Ten coming up, so yeah. <laughs> That's so how they in, get up to the moon. So we're in nowhere. We're in nowhere. We're in nowhere. It's the, it's, it's, it's Mr. Nobody's new base. Uh, right. And little nobody has handcuffed the team. <gasps> what? How right. Dare he? Right. Mr. Nobody apologizes to the team. Little nobody's new. He doesn't know this stuff. And so they all get unhandcuffed. And nobody announces that the team have been placed on the top ten of Interpol's most wanted list. Yes. Most of um, them. Except for Roman. Yes. He's number 11. <laughs> so I Letty, can't... I think, is number 6. Tej, 8. And Ramsey, he's a 10, apparently. Yeah. Um, and number 7 is a uh, missing in tribute to Paul Walker, apparently. Because he died during oh. production of Fury 7. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Carry on. It's genuinely lovely. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, see Andrew brings the notes. I bring the uh, IMDb trivia. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice balance there. <laughs> so Cipher is a tech boogeyman, but Roman thinks he's too hot to be a boogeyman. Of course, <laughs> of course. So they're they're now on the the understanding that Cipher is this thing, and uh, they're going to catch Dom. They can find out why he turned, but they need an extra pair of hands to do this because they haven't got a Dom Toretto anymore. Decker yeah. Shaw. <laughs> Decker Shaw, the man who killed Han. Yep. That's cool. That's cool. Bring him on. No problems there. They go and try to fact... kill them last time. Yeah, except the fact that, you know, you destroyed Dom's house and everything. <laughs> yeah. They, they kind of get over that fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah kind of, like... don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, of all the things to you know, that have happened, that all the things that, have, you know, that he's done to them, it's like, oh, it's, it's no big deal. Really? I would think it's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you're a murderer. You're a murderer. <laughs> and, you know, destroyer of houses. <laughs> and, and destroyer of property. Yeah. Pro- where, where we used to have wonderful barbecues. I feel like it's literally just, they go, yeah, but he's got that funny accent, doesn't he? Let's let him, let's let him go. It's no, right. no, it's the fact that he's bald. That was it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah Roman, Roman is really like, ah, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> It turns out Owen Shaw was corrupted by Cypher when Deckard refused to join her team and he wants to get revenge because she put Owen in the way of danger. Mm-hmm. And so then Roman, smartly enough, is like, well, we've got God's Eye from that last film. Remember that? Let's use that to find Dominic. So they do. He's in London. And I Hong Kong. I back God's Eye because I wasn't I, sure. I, I thought, after, 
<laughs> I thought after number seven that God's Eye was just gonna like be for- completely forgotten about. <laughs> and Tokyo and Seoul, because they're, they're, they're doing an evasion tactic. So so God's Eye is already op- obsolete. So well done. They brought it back to say, hey, you know what, Ramsey's idea. Yeah. Cipher's already better than that. Yeah. So they just have to uh, find out where the thing is that's creating these pings, and they might be able to find something and blah 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 blah. Right. <laughs> Yes. This, this this immediately is techno babble, <laughs> where they they like oh it works and uh, they find the location where 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 is Dominic Toretto now? Real close by, isn't he? So, yeah, uh-huh. it's this weird location. It's it's it, although I would say on the map I would venture yeah it's it's really nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I did like this little line there when Mister Nobody goes ah oh, that's interesting I'm like why because that's here. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he just because because that's here throw it off like that with yeah. a smile on his face like you don't you say <laughs> and then and then the explosion happens almost I really hope that they were listening in and oh, wait wait for him to say it because it will make it really cool <laughs> it's not like they can stop us anyway just wait for him to say it first <laughs> <laughs> yeah so immediately after that boom there's an explosion and Cypher and Don walk in they get concussion grenades for everybody as a treat. <laughs> they go and grab the god's eye. Yeah. Um, Letty, Letty's screaming out to Dom. Dom looks over, and then Cipher looks at Letty, and gives a big old smoochy smooch to Dom. Mm. That's fun. And Dom's so into it. <laughs> He's literally like a statue. I love it. <laughs> well, you you know that that wasn't his idea. The fact that he she had to reach for him, so that should have been a clear indicator of what was what was going oh, on. I thought well, you meant I, in the film. Like... Yeah, like, uh, actually, no. I'm pretty sure Vin probably was. Like, you didn't yeah, know that. No, I don't happened. want to do this. <laughs> All right. No, I've got Charlie's thorn. I don't want to kiss her. What are you talking about? <laughs> as soon as they yelled, cut! It was like, "What the fuck, Charlie?" That wasn't in the script. <laughs> <laughs> you cooties. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> so now, now Dwayne Johnson has to kiss her. <laughs> That's the old good thing. <laughs> no, Dwayne, now Dwayne Johnson has to kiss Ben. <laughs> That's good, oh, man. man. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny on another level. That's just gross. <laughs> gross. I'm. You know what? I'm, I'm writing it in my head. It's going well. <laughs> <laughs> So the family regained composure, and then Roman Hannah thinks, well, Brian would know what to do. Well, no, we can't bring Brian in. No, Letty reminds them, they promised not to bring me and Brian back into this. Yeah. It's an important moment just to remind you, hey, this character's never coming back. Mm-hmm. We'll never see yeah. one of them back in the franchise in the next film. Yeah. I really hope they don't bring him back. No, it's like looking at the camera saying, hey, Jordana Brewster, you know, probably not. Although, although, yeah, definitely. But probably not, right? But definitely, definitely later, right? If you're watching this, I'm assuming you're watching this, Jordana Brewster. We're looking at you right now. Because she had her own private screen. <laughs> <laughs> so Dom's angry about the Cypher kiss. But of course, Cypher's got an ace up her sleeve. And we feel that uh, the reason, the reason Dom's been doing this all along is Cypher's, Cypher's got Elena captured on the plane. Yep, and Elena uh, up and says, uh, now she has the three of us. Yeah, That's Dominic, Elena, who's the third, and little baby something is his middle name. I forgot, Marcus, little well, baby Marcus, Marcus, that was Marcus, because because Dominic Toretto's daddy Dom now, and he has to come up with the first name, which is you know, he's already got some pressure on him. But this um, the important detail is that uh, Elena was pregnant. Didn't tell Dom because uh, he found out the same time that uh, they found out Letty was alive, which means she yeah. was pregnant during Furious Six and Furious Seven, which is Furious Seven. If you remember, she was exploded out of the office. Yeah, yeah. that's just that's, that's just you know reckless. So this is this is theoretically only like twelve months after the Furious Six. Uh, Despite again the fact that Furious Seven definitively takes place in 2014, based on music choice. This bloody timeline! I swear to God. <laughs> so Shaky has to take place in 2014. Yeah, because because you know, but he the baby's not 
is not walking yet, so he must have been only a couple of months old. Exactly. Except the fact that at the start of Furious Six, of course, Jack was born, and by Furious Seven, Jack is walking, talking, and going to preschool. Yes. Jack is Brian and Mia's son. It hurts my head. So there, there's like a don't, two don't, year. Don't, don't think about it there. too much. <laughs> Otherwise, it just just it, the whole point of the, these films is they don't make sense, so we shouldn't question them. We happening. have to. We have to really do detail <laughs> about why flip phones and broken iPods were the uh, rage in Tokyo at the same time <laughs> as the God's Eye was being used in Furious Seven. It'll all, it all come to fruition in uh, Fast Nine. When, F9. Oh, sorry. F9, sorry. When, uh, when time travel comes into this, I imagine. They go to the moon and they turn the clocks back. Yep. I don't even know. <laughs> so Cypher gives Dom the go-ahead, hands him a gun, and says, I know you're thinking of killing me, and Rhodes right here, and takes the ferry out of the plane. I dare you to try and do that. But this is hey, awkward. <laughs> there's a two man fail safe to open the cage, so what could we killing everyone do? I've got no choice. Yeah. I don't know. His his emotion here just felt really fake. <laughs> uh, his emotion here is Vin Diesel was acting against Academy Award winner Charlie Theron. Yeah. He can't do it. <laughs> a lot of this a lot of this amounts to I've gotta try and show I'm as good an actor as Charlie Theron. And he really isn't. <laughs> It's just the way he screams. Um, what is it? He says something like, uh, "I got no choice." That is it. Yeah, and it's just, oh, it's, it's just cringeworthy. <laughs> he's trying, and uh... he tries. So, he tries so hard, it just comes out really, really awkwardly. So, yeah. but don't remind Cypher that if you step on a tiger's neck, you have to keep your foot on it. Mm-hmm. And he hangs his necklace in front of Elena's cage to give, keep her. Something to remember him by. Then we go back to Hobbs and Shaw. They're bantering away. Could you imagine a whole film with them bantering away? That would be impossible to watch. <laughs> <laughs> they're bantering. They're, you know, they're all, oh, we're, we're big, we're big, we're big, we're hard. Little nobody has given his nickname there. And then Ramsey goes, ah, oh, what about ghost planes? Ghost plane, everybody. That is, a, <laughs> that is used in this film. Satellites move like everything else so there are yeah. always channels where they have a blind spot and planes can fly through them as long as they know where the blind spots are going to be and if you find them you'll find the pathway to Dominic Toretto through a ghost plane yeah it's, a, it's an interesting idea it's an interesting idea but the term ghost plane um, leaves a lot to be desired yeah because what I want to see is you know United 93 but uh, Casper Jesus Christ <laughs> really no yeah. sorry <laughs> You could, you could have said you could have mentioned the aircraft from Avengers, you know. Well, the helicopter. You could even mentioned yeah. Um, from That's not an aircraft. Wonder it's not Woman. Clay, it's flying. It's an aircraft. <laughs> Wonder Woman eighty four. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, the invisible plane. Yeah, you could have gone those two ways. No. But no. <laughs> to United ninety three. Come on. All right. You know the 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 Sully's plane. <laughs> Because you yeah. know that, that had to make a you know a, a false water landing, and oh, so I'm not yeah. sure if it made it back into the sky after if Turtle a, came by to rescue everybody. If it was a ghost plane, a hell of a lot more um, seagulls would have thrown, flown. Yeah, they, there it. was a goose. Goose. Well, seagulls would have flown through it as well now. <laughs> cool. Anyway, Dominic is in uh, what's this place? It's a. It's I've got it written here New York. It is right. New York, <laughs> which I believe is the concrete jungle where dreams are made of. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he's driving across a bridge and the family going off grid, they're travelling in a truck and they come out in a food market. I'm trying to remember that bit. Well, the, you know, Roman was just bitching about the the whole uh, whole means of transport and uh, right, yeah. they don't ask why they're there and then little nobody says this is our base now. Yeah, because they walk like, into a secret car garage. Yeah, it's like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like their version of a sweet sweet shop. Yeah, it's the toy shop. <laughs> No, don't even. Yes, they literally call it the toy shop. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Is that part? It's every vehicle sees from drug dealers on the east coast, and they've got a tank. And you know what a toy shop needs? A Santa. But look, look, Roman. He sees this as a million dollar supercar, and he wants the forklift driver to hand it over. And, uh, yeah, he calls this guy Blanta, Black Santa. So stupid. He loves. He loves his. He loves his. His blur things. Yeah. His portmanteaus. <laughs> He's poor mantos, if you will. 
See, Roman, that's how you do it. I haven't checked. Is the guy credited as Black Santa or is he credited as Black Planta? Well, I think it's Blanta, colon, <clears throat> Black Santa. Ah, uh, okay. Which Best of both worlds. Oh, with kids things. right there. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom's driving and he hits a red button by the clutch, a little red button that he somehow managed to put in his car, and the engine starts to shut down. He pulls off in an alleyway and he needs to fix his car, and so Cypher gives him five minutes whilst mm-hmm. watching on a street cam. But Dominic, he's raising the bonnet and suddenly he's out of frame. Oh, it's fine, he's not doing anything. He, he manages to find the one alleyway that is not even accessible by cameras or anything <laughs> like that. That's not and, true, because there's an ATM across the street. Oh, yes, and what happens? Oh, uh, a van pulls into the alleyway <laughs> and it blocks that angle as well. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's like it's almost intentional. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cypher demands to look through reflections. Oh, she's determined. She is desperate. <laughs> and so suddenly, Dominic Toretto is hanging out with, uh, oh, what's that? A Academy Award winner and a dame. Helen Mirren. Yep, although we don't find that out until later, but... No, wait, what are you doing? We do. Because <laughs> <laughs> she literally goes, I'll give you till I finish my cup of tea and I'm fucking thirsty. That's this moment. She's channeling, oh, right. Barbara. Okay. She's channeling, channeling Barbara Windsor here. Talking about family. Family. Get out, you're bored. (laughs) You know, she's doing her exercises and her bra flies off. uh, Johnny's favourite. Why would you bring that up? Why would you bring that up? We're having fun. That's Calendar Girls. That's another film. (laughs) (laughs) So Dom hands her a device and returns to the car. And Cypher is confused, but uh, she doesn't really care. Things just move on. Yeah. Her, the, the brain genius who plans all these meticulous things out, is like, yeah, okay, right, I guess that happened. It's not like he could have done anything in that time. It's not like he could have met with a veteran actress of stage and screen. Yeah. Yeah, well, she, if she was so paranoid about it, she could have put a camera in the car just to, it would be easy to monitor him. <laughs> yeah, it's not like he, she would do that later on. <laughs> yeah, it, it only took... Um, Series of unfortunate events for that to happen. <laughs> we should say that uh, Cypher is lovely snicket. <laughs> <laughs> so Letty's there. She's prepping a grappling hook because uh, this franchise is now obsessed with grappling hooks. Oh yeah, uh, every film. <laughs> and uh, Hobbs reads out Shaw's bio. He was uh, recommended for the Victoria Cross after saving men in combat, but but he's a traitor, right? But so is Luke Hobbs. Luke Hobbs is a traitor, isn't he? Yeah. But he's kind of a hero, right? Mm-hmm. What What is a traitor? But someone who did what they had to do outside the law. And they agreed they'd be best friends in another life. Or another maybe, film. Maybe. <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> hey, you're right. So they're in New York hunting the Russian Minister of Defense in a convoy on the streets of New York in a limo with lots of protection. Dom's heading that way. There's no family out there. No one's ready for this. <laughs> and then a thousand cars in the area are hacked. Yep. Look zombie at cars. Come. <laughs> zombie cars. Are you calling it zombies? <sighs> oh my zombies? God. <laughs> right. Zombie cars. <laughs> they're, they're parked. They're in traffic. They're in showrooms. They all just start moving and becoming one big convoy. How do we feel? Again, <laughs> look at how far we've come. <laughs> also the dangers of you know integrating your phone with your fo- with your car just saying <laughs> yeah never put any information you actually want to keep secret in a car so don't put yourself in a car basically yeah and all and you notice that it's always like really new cars you don't see that you know volkswagen beetles or anything or robin reliance getting hacked into. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've, I've, seen a, I've seen a volkswagen beetle with a mind of its own Oh, um, really? Yeah. How, how how much of a mind? Would you say half of a mind? <laughs> a few movies worth of a mind. <laughs> okay, but like... Franchise uh, worth. Did, how, how is its uh, CPU, its hard drive? Was it, you know... Was it starting to start up? Or would you say it was loading? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was fully loaded, yeah. It was fully loaded, okay. Yeah. That's good. It's just... 
Anyway. <laughs> Did Axel Foley ever put a uh, banana up for the tailpipe? Of her? <laughs> I mean, only in the porn version. Because that way, that, that makes sense of how he goes bananas. <laughs> Come on! It's right there! <laughs> I'm really sorry I started this because I've never seen a Herbie movie. You've never seen a Herbie movie? No. Well, they're on Disney Plus, aren't they? So, yeah. 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 I know, I have no excuse. Next month. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's move on before you even make some note of this. <laughs> It's, it's, you, you've, it's recorded now, you have to watch it. <laughs> this is contractual. Mm. So the family are hearing of the uh, madness on the streets. They know this chaos is done. And they start driving out there. Meanwhile, on the sixth floor parking lot, cars start just crashing through the walls and raining down. This is kind of crazy. Have, have you ever seen the back... The uh, behind the scenes stuff on this, like uh, people were taking video when they were shooting this scene. No, I don't think so. They had cars actually, you know, they were just driving cars off buildings, and dropping. Them. <laughs> oh, and it, it was like insane watching. You know, I think it was Twitvid. Maybe it was Vine. Just sort of people. Was Vine still this. was Vine still going at this? Twenty sixteen, I think so. I think it was the uh, last so, the last time. Twenty seventeen. Yes. Well, no, the, the, the shooting of the film. Ah, uh, right. Like on set, people were just watching them do this. I was like, oh, well, shit, this film's going to be amazing if this is what they're doing. Well, well, how many cars were really destroyed in this? I'm asking Johnny because, you know, he's all about the trip. Oh, um, I haven't seen... Uh, hold on. Because yeah. I don't know if it, this would probably um, surpass the Blues Brothers record or not. Oh, absolutely. It's got to. As long uh, as they were um, CG. <laughs> Sorry, um, I put you on the spot yeah, here. Yeah, let's job, let's talk about something else but in the meantime. Yeah, like Can't... I said, nice posh new cars, not dirty old mangy cars that just get hacked into. So it just feels like it just kind of put gives the impression that New York's all about the new cars. It is. Not not about no new car, no old cars in New York. No, they uh, kind unless, of clean... unless they're unless they're old new cars. They cleaned up Times Square, they got rid of the pool theatre, they got rid of all the old cars in the district. Uh, they just they sent them to New Jersey. I can't <laughs> seem to find a number for how many cars, not on the um on the IMDB trivia anyway. But I will the, I will endeavor. The amount of I'll, cars destroyed is uncalculable. <laughs> uncalculable. Yeah. Um, it's still going on. Which I probably should have said. You're right. It's just a shitload of cards. Yeah. <laughs> a shitload of cars. I'm going to add that now. <laughs> okay. most, of, most of them around this limo, which is now stopped, and every other car in the convoy has been destroyed. And then Don walks out, and he's got these heavy gear and a shield. And the driver starts shooting at him until he runs out of bullets. And Dominic's just, you know, slowly slugging his way. 348 cars, apparently. 348 cars are dead. This comes from motorbiscuit.com. Thank you, motorbiscuit. <laughs> I'll enjoy dunking you in a fat <laughs> boil. <laughs> So Don wants this briefcase. It's a, uh, it's uh, it's got the nuclear launch codes in it. It's the nuclear football, as it is. Mm-hmm. But the minister's aide insists that the limo is impenetrable. There's no way they can get through this. Don gets out a saw and starts hacking away a circular saw and just just uh, opens up the gas tank and lights a flare. That teaches them a lesson. <laughs> they hand it over immediately, and, and as calmly. he's running away, and calmly, yeah. and calmly, you're right. It, yeah, it's 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 very politically acceptable. There's no madness in these people who are, you know, fearing for their lives in this immediate moment. Just there's a briefcase. Thank you. Have a good day. It's not, it's not as if there's something important, like you know, something that could destroy the whole world. No, gosh, no. <laughs> and it would, wouldn't take away their jobs, which I think mm. is more important. <laughs> but the family are driving in now, and they've and, locked. And- Dog. In their nice cars that didn't seem to be hacked for some reason. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they've uh, they've found the way to take off the computer chips, I guess. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you just get you know, to work the body for five seconds. And you can cut all severs to the internet, and you're fine. <laughs> that's how <laughs> that's how techno stuff works. Oh yeah. As long as it's not on the cloud, everything's fine. That's what sex tape taught us. <laughs> 
there. Oh, God, that movie, Jesus. <laughs> that movie is definitely a film I've seen. <laughs> you know, yeah, I went to the press screening of that. That was a, <laughs> an event. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a free iPad full of playlists? Carefully constructed for you by Jason Siegel? No, you know what? No, I should really well, find it. Sony, it. how dare they? I <laughs> know. Oh, it's just like, it's like no one cares anymore. No one cares about audience retention. <laughs> <laughs> so they're doing a bit of a stare down here, and then little nobody decides to hit the gas and open up a gap. And Dom just drives right through it so he can leave the family behind because little nobody doesn't know how to do this stuff. And there's a chase through New York. Dom hits some scaffolding. The facade of the building crashes down a little nobody, and Hobbs has to smash through that to help everyone else get through. And at this point, uh, the most important thing of this film, Roman calls himself Big Sexy. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I know why. I've seen Roman Pierce, but why Why in the middle of this chase scene does he have to call himself Big Sexy? Why not? <laughs> well, leave that on number 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So Dom and Leslie drive side by side. It's a little bit of a room, reminiscent moment from Furious 6. And he hits the nose, and Letty goes, not this time. And launches the grapple onto him. And then Ted shoots the grapple. And then boom, Shaw, Hobbs, Roman. And there's five points around him. He's never going to get out of this, right? So good. It's so cool. <laughs> so it's, what is a 300, 3,000 horsepower engine versus five cars surrounding him. <laughs> so Roman kind of drives a little bit closer to him by accident. And then Dom manages to break free and smash and flip his car over. Yeah, he breaks off the door and that flies into Hobbs. He spins around, his car flips, and Tej and Letty crash into each other. He escapes and then Shaw gets out on foot because he's the only one not harmed at this point. <laughs> and then they get in an alleyway and Don pulls a gun. You thought this was going to be a street fight? <laughs> Remember? Remember from the last wrong. film? Remember from the last film? Yeah. And then Don shoots Shaw. That's it. He's dead. That's the last we'll ever see. Yeah, that's the last we'll ever see of Deckard Shaw. But Letty, in that meantime, grabs the football and heads down the alleyway. Don fires a gun. In the air. Oh. You point his, his aim is awful. His, his aim is awful. It was a very point break at that point. <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't scream, ah. Yeah. Well, you know, he's not... It's, uh, you don't want to be dram- dr- dramatic without Charlie Theron. Look, he's no yeah. real. Lady looks at him and goes, you love me and you're not going to shoot me. But hey, Rhodes is there and he will. But Dom aims his gun at Rhodes and Letty's like, you know what, this shit's too much and hands Rhodes the case and runs off because there's something going on here. Mm-hmm. And that's how that scene ends. <laughs> it's kind of a downer because uh, back at the toy shop, uh, it's like, right, they've got the nuclear launch codes and EMP. We don't know their plan. And also Decker Shaw's dead. He makes Hobbs so angry, he dents a metal wall with his fist. Aww. He loved him all along. (laughs) He never got to say it. Didn't get to say goodbye. (laughs) Or have the, like, you know, the dying in my arms scene. Aww. (laughs) (laughs) Never got to shoot his gun in the air. On Cypher's plane, we find out that... uh, Dom letting Letty go was a big no-no. Eleanor's tied up. And Cypher's in the cage in there, holding the baby with a gun. Yeah, this is painful. Well, this is your doing. Choices have consequences. She, she, no, Char- Charlize is throwing, showing her, her acting chops here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you think, oh, shit, is, is, is Cypher going to kill a baby? But no, Rhodes... Rose is back there and he kills Elena right in front of everybody. And so after four films, we lose a very important character. Now, we've had, um, we, well, pretty much almost had two characters of a turn from the dead. Right. So I just, I wonder how they're going to, because we're already, already trying to figure out how they're going to bring uh, Han back in F9, the fast saga. Oh, brother. But um, obviously, we we don't see his death happen on screen. We don't see her death happen on screen either. No, so I wonder, the how they, I wonder how they're going to write her back in for Fast 10. I mean, 
she wakes up next to on the moon Giselle on on the on the moon base. And it's like, wow, everyone who died is here now. <laughs> and we're all chasing after and John Cena's now our best friend, and we're all just chasing after Charlie's Theron. <laughs> and a uh, a sentient tuna sandwich whose crust <laughs> needs to be cut off. Oh. We need that we need the Toretto um cafe open again. Letty knows who Rhodes is because when she worked for Owen Shaw, she met up with she saw him at some point. Hmm. Ramsey knows Rhodes because when she was captured by Moshe Kandy, he was involved with this stuff, which means Cypher, right? Yeah, Cypher is kind of involved with all of these people. Well, if you remember, Owen Shaw was kind of like uh, involved with Braga back in Furious Six. What if this is the Owen Shaw to Owen Shaw's Braga? <laughs> Shit, right? Also, Cypher believes that family is a biological lie. (laughs) Which makes her the worst villain. Yeah. It's so against the concept of family. And she's also the author of all of Dom's pain. (laughs) Does she say that in this film? In a thick Austrian accent? (laughs) She should. Hmm. She she said it in her own cold way. (laughs) (laughs) So now we get into what Cypher's game plan is. She wants to take a nuclear submarine and hold the superpowers of the world accountable for their actions. And if they do something bad, she's going to be there with the nuclear submarine to teach them some things. It makes you wonder what kind of things that she'd want to protest against her. <laughs> okay, what, what's happened recently that's worth protesting? <laughs> a fair few things. <laughs> Has there been anything wrong going on in the world lately? A couple of things here and there. Yeah. You know, there's a few things <laughs> that just doesn't seem... You know, everything seems to be working perfectly normal. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm struggling to think. I think we're doing fine. I think yeah. the submarine's a bit of a overstatement. <laughs> you just need to hashtag. Yeah. I think, <laughs> do you think she might, like, you know, if, like, her favourite sandwich shop has run out of a favourite filling, she did launch a yeah. nuclear war <laughs> or something like that? <laughs> That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. maybe maybe that's what they I don't want my fat free mayo. I don't want <laughs> more mayo. Is this organic? No. Nuclear war. <laughs> <laughs> She's just protesting the fact that we didn't get um a McDonald's monopoly last year. <laughs> wow. Well, Never forget. Just, I'm so sorry, Johnny, for your clear clear sadness in this moment. Uh, or the lack of ice cream vans on the street. Yes, exactly that as well. Yep. Uh, we had some ice cream vans earlier this year. Oh, well, yeah, some, but not, not many enough. I want nuclear war, damn it. I, want to <laughs> I mean, we don't often get them, but we had them. It's like, well, I don't really want to go out to you right now and grab an ice cream. It's March, and also there's a pandemic. <laughs> I'll come back in a few months' time. Yeah, and vaccinated. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, you know, contactless. Because some of them don't, don't even, they just use cash, and that ain't cool. Yeah. It's true, cash isn't cool. You know what's cool? Ice cream. What? A billion yeah. cash. <laughs> Johnny lawyer up. <laughs> oh. So Rose is the key to finding Cipher because uh, they can get the information in the time between Cipher do Cipher wiping it from the internet and Rhodes actually doing it. So there's like this this break because Cipher's on her own shit, but Rhodes he's a bit slow when he comes to uh, you know being anywhere, I guess. And it's not as if he, you know, blends in with the crowd. He's got bright red hair. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, 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 he's a ginger fella from Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, and he's humongous. So exactly. it's not as if he's, he's just going to stand out. Oh, where is he? Oh, there he is. And it's like everywhere he goes, he's going, is the big woman here yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Game of Thrones yeah. reference. Yeah. Just flying, going over my head. I'm <laughs> just just going, 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 going over your head and for, for, for Rhodes, it's going under his head because he's gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> But Hobbs does mention, hey, you know, they took these uh, nuclear codes from Russia. So I uh, guess where they're probably going to be. Let's go to Russia and wait there and maybe we'll find something there. And then Mr. Nobody returns because he needs to tell everyone, hey, speaking of Russia, there's a secret Russian naval base. They fix up old Cold War stuff, right? And put new engines in them. Do you get it? Do you get it? It's like old versus new again. Take whatever vehicle you want and go over there. And I like the fact that he uses a crowbar to open it. He didn't just open it with like a key or anything. He just, he's so pissed. 
you need a crowbar to open the cabinet with all the keys in it. You know how dangerous that is? You cut someone's hand on that. <laughs> yeah, a little nobody finally gets this shit, you know? Yeah, you get the, you know, get, gets someone's, it gets his thumb out of his ass and just... <laughs> <laughs> preparing for any kind of possible street fights. Yeah. So we go to Russia. Oh, well, we go to Iceland, which is standing in for Russian territory for oh, the yeah, third sorry. time in a blockbuster movie after A View to a Kill, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, um, so yeah. Time. Okay, right, third time. Third time, yep. I was excited to find out what the third one was going to be. And then, and, and the third one, of course, they made the Furious. Yep. Yep. Boy, Iceland, eh? Including the largest explosion to be filmed in that country, says IMDb. I wonder who, who would shoot anything in Iceland? That seems like a really tedious thing to shoot, wouldn't it be, Rhodes? <laughs> <laughs> so before they do anything... Hobbs is telling Letty that she might, that he might have to take down Dom, and Letty's like, "You might have to take us both down." Because you know? Letty's still can get her hands oh, oh, Unwavering me. dedication is like payback kind of thing. It's like you know, because because uh, Dom's all like, you know, I have to save Letty. Not in the past films, and it's like even though she didn't remember him, and it's like, oh, and now it's like it's like the same thing, just the other way around. Just the other way around, and and less interestingly written. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little more complicated you're not waiting for that penny to drop the, dro- the penny's already there you just have to pick it up <laughs> and of course you know we, we, we then all day you'll have good luck we don't do cash anymore so exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, so we're now on some icy roads and Dom's driving a gigantic arm and muscle car it's a big old beast it's like a Mad Max situation it's right mm. towards this naval base and they put the barriers up and he blasts an EMP and they go straight down again and a helicopter comes out because hey, it's time for another helicopter. We haven't destroyed a helicopter in a whole film. <laughs> it is an aircraft, after all. <laughs> so it's always fun to have an aircraft in a in a car based franchise. Mm. And what's more impressive is, uh, hey, we've got a submarine, and to hack the submarine, you have to be have to have the EMP underneath it. <laughs> so it's a good job that submarine is on dry dock and kind of above ground. On and, some and completely metal. inaccessible and not guarded whatsoever. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I mean, these separatists just don't care about security except for, you know, a helicopter and a couple of guns. Considering that they're, they're only, they are guarding a humongous submarine with their nuclear warheads and you would have yeah. they put, kind of put in a bit more thought into their security <laughs> protocols. <laughs> should have, you should have had, uh, you should have separated with a few more people with you, I think. <laughs> maybe, maybe an alliance test. What? Like five, five <laughs> different separatist groups are lying together. Just, just, or, or just go on Craigslist. <laughs> you know, dominating a Russian nuclear submarine base, need people, good pay, cold. You get to meet Dominic Toretto, possibly. Yeah, you just have to wait for the bad guys to show up. <laughs> so Dom gets right underneath the submarine, he hits the EMP, and the helicopter crashes at the same time. And then the submarine is now available to be remote controlled. Ramsey notes she just carjacked a submarine. <laughs> They'll be subject then. It should be, but you know, Ramsey, she's not exactly uh, witty. <laughs> she's only number 10 on Interpol. She's no letty. Yeah. So Tej needs to get on the submarine to stop it. Ramsey thinks she can hack the submarine from away from Cypher at the same time. So we've got two computer attacks going on with the team here. Because Ramsey's always like anti cipher because hey, they, they, they are constantly against one another, I guess. This is the thing that hasn't really worked out the whole, you know, God's eye being obsolete and now she wants to get her payback. Roman's driving that supercar. It's just, he, he doesn't look as if he's enjoying it though. Yeah, no, he's, uh, it turns out a, a bright orange car with, uh, with, not great tyres slipping around. On yeah, the he, you would have thought he would have. I, you know what? I wouldn't have put it th- thought of him to be practical in a situation like this. Yeah, that's kind of not his thing. But Tej's got the tank. Yeah, yeah. See, mm. he was thinking. He was smart. He was thinking ahead. Right. Yeah, those mm-hmm. tracks they, they they stick to the ground pretty well. Yeah. yeah. And so everyone yeah. enters the base, and Dom's Dom's chased by these separatists in a car, and his car leaps and grabs a chain and pulls down an iron girder. 
<laughs> oh, oh god! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it wraps around the front of this car. It, 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 it has to be that it is a car from the Cars universe that's chomped down on the front of the chain to grab it. <clears throat> there is no way otherwise. <laughs> And it could have wrapped around that front and pulled it down. But uh, hey, we get some carnage. We get to see Letty and oh, Hobbs. There will be carnage. There will be carnage. It will truly be a planet of carnage. <laughs> Letty and Hobbs and Ramsey take over the watchtower. Ramsey starts doing this hack and Letty's fighting one guy. And then Hobbs goes off on another fight scene with like five people. <laughs> Keep counting those punches. <laughs> so this is back and forth, Cypher, Ramsey, Ramsey, Cypher. Who's going to control it? And Tej Roman and Little Nobody get on the submarine. And they don't know, but there's just one small problem with that plan. Yeah, Tej knows exactly what to do, but uh, they go weapons hot and he's locked out of the uh, main facility. So those two are stuck in the room with all the information. In Russian? Oh, yeah. Roman tries to read <laughs> Cyrillic at this point. <laughs> That's, uh, that goes well. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just, they, they just panic and just press everything. Yeah, the good news is if you look for a countdown, it won't be Russian. They'll be able to find it. <laughs> so little nobody finds it. It pulls out the chip and boom, they've sorted that and they exit the submarine. So it wasn't boom. It was just yay. <laughs> <laughs> no boom. No boom. No boom. There we go. Dom has to pick up roads in the frozen landscape. He's got to he's got to drive them off. Cipher gets the submarine down out of dry dock and begin sinking in the water. And the team starts to drive and they're like, hey, there's a, there's a sea lock 10 miles ahead. If we can get there, we can stop the submarine from making it to the ocean. And the separatists start chasing them. And they've got rockets on the top of their cars. <laughs> and of course, Roman's sliding on the ice. Oh, yeah. It's very, it's very James Bond at, at this point, sliding cars. It's, 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 it's very Die Another Day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Pierce Brosnan's in there somewhere in an invisible car. We just don't see him. And then it's like, you know, the choice of having a bright, you know, flashy sports car with no, sp- no, uh, I, no uh, snow tyres just bites him in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, they fire some missiles and uh, he starts to uh, sink into the water, which is melting because of fire. Poor but it's still bloody cold. <laughs> it's still very cold. Tej uses his tank to fire at the cars. Hobbs, he's got a bulldozer on his truck. He, <laughs> he puts it in reverse and it crashes and it slams into things and it stops missiles it's kind of cool yeah it's yeah cool. and guides them yeah he ha- holds it's their cool. hand and guides them it does tej fires a grapple into the side of uh roman's car roman opens the door and is pulled out of the water and he's he's dragged across as they've skilled mo- these ski mobiles come and start shooting at him and he picks up a door at the door and he massively smashes one of the guys he just he just crashes him with it yes yeah, that that's very mad max they're on the ice instead of sand you know they're in the in the vast nowhere just 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 <laughs> harsh metal on human contact yeah and then number 11 my ass <laughs> it's a good moment it's a, it's a good yeah. you know doesn't really raise his doesn't raise his profile though <laughs> no it's, it's, but it makes him what, feel good a car door to the face is not enough to put him on higher and on the interpol list a car door on the face of a separatist maybe not but a car door on the face of the queen you want to hit the face <laughs> i'm not just saying it depends on the context of who the car door is hitting that roma might go to the top of the things depends is helen Mirren playing the queen <laughs> yes <laughs> Well, you do know that Decker Shaw is royalty. Yes. <laughs> so, so then we cut back to Cypher's plane. There's these two hang gliders flying in. And they open up the back of the, the, the plane. They've been, they've, the, the plane's been hacked and they open it up. And uh, then we cut away from that because that's not clearly not important, is it? Because we've got to go to Rhodes. Oh, He's yeah. going to shoot the family. It's like, uh, you know, you choose who I shoot first, Dom. Don doesn't make a choice. So Letty's going to be the first to be shot. Finishing what he started. Finish what he started. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it turns out Deckard and Owen Shaw are on the plane. Remember them? Da, da, da. What? De- Deckard's alive. Sorry. And now Deckard's alive. This is the part where we flash back. Now I remember. Yeah, so Deckard calls Owen Scarface. <laughs> doesn't really do it. And uh, there he goes, these assholes aren't going to kill themselves. And then we flash back. 
So, so we see that uh, Leo and Santos, they were the fake coroners who picked out Jacko Shell's body after he was shot, right? Which is a lovely little cameo. That's a nice little thing for them to do, considering yeah. how much money they probably lost on the roulette in Fast Five. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so the, the man from Cuba was in the van, blocking the ATM camera. And we see that Mama Shaw's sister Decker takes over with him on the mission. And he uh, says that she says that Cypher's got this thing called uh, the Devil's Bummer or something. <laughs> he talked about family. He talked about says, family. Talk about family. It's important. <laughs> so Owen takes the cockpit. They uh, Deckard and Owen scan in at the same time. They deal with the fail safe. That bloody fail safe thing, right? <laughs> and now Deckard's got baby Marcus. Gives Dom the call. The, ba- the baby's safe. Dom gets out of the car just as Rhodes shoots, making him miss. And then he uh, beats up Rhodes a bunch. Kills him. That was for later. And then calls Cypher. You just took the foot off the tiger's neck. Because now it's just down to ground family shit fucking up. <laughs> yeah, see, Shaw calls him and says, uh, baby's safe. But is he really? Because yeah, Shaw now just... has to go through an he entire submarine. Don't trust Deckard Shaw as a babysitter. Yeah. yeah right. Everything that you've gone through, through you, shot, you shot him. And, you know, you've been you've been basically up each other's ass for the last couple of films. And you trust him to be take care of your baby and take him off a plane that no one can track. <laughs> yeah. Apparently so. Because, hey, Owen Shaw is also there. We, we, we love Owen Shaw, right? Oh, yeah. Didn't He's they, also <laughs> didn't now, they blow, blow up his plane? <laughs> <laughs> so Shaw puts headphones on Marcus and they plays Alfred of the Chipmunks. <laughs> How they can find a pair of Beats headphones to fit a baby, by the way, that's just impeccable uh, yeah. foresight. <laughs> there's some very specific details. Mm. Wait, uh, well, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's all about the details. Let's be <laughs> honest. If you're going to buy a pair of Beats headphones for God knows how much, you're going to have to buy Beats a pair. <laughs> Beats by who, though? You know who. <laughs> do I know who? We know this. We know this? <laughs> yeah, you do. I'm just saying, because, you know, F. Gary Gray, oh, what was his film before he did this film? What was it, Straight okay. Out of Compton? <laughs> so, hey, I'm friends with Dre. Why don't I just uh, put one of his things in here? Yeah, it's not as if it's like... You it's, it's like... It's like having tequila popping up in things. <laughs> or, you know, or, you know, Crystal Skull Vodka. It's brand integration. Grey Goose Vodka, oh, yeah. actually. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Hobbs is uh, yeah. Hobbs picks up Roman. Roman does not like being in this car that is being used as a missile blocker. <laughs> and then Hobbs asks if he has to if he ever stopped shouting, which I think is a fair question to ask. Well, it's like you would have thought that he'd be he'd feel a bit safer in probably the biggest, steadiest vehicle. Yeah, I mean, this guy. If everything goes wrong, this guy is a cushion who can stop. A pregnant woman from losing anything whilst falling off of two stories or onto a car. So you're feeling you've got to be feel safe in the Hobbs car. Well, apparently mm. not, because he's the one that's most reckless. <laughs> <laughs> but here comes Dom. He's flying in. He's crashing the convoy, and the missiles go everywhere. And he drives through the fire, which seems to be this thing. Is Dominic's always going through fire in these films at this point? <laughs> it's like he's taking this journey through hell at every step. Yeah. Well, if, if there's ice, there needs to be fire. <laughs> Game of Thrones right there. This is a, this is a story. <laughs> something, something, the fire rises. Yeah. So the, the, the submarine fires a torpedo, it crashes through the ice, and it just starts sliding next to Hobbs's car. What is he going to do? Is he going to just say hi to the torpedo? Is he going to try and drive away from the torpedo? I can't oh. remember what he does. Are you he, kidding me? He holds. He, gets, he holds the. He, he kind of holds it and guides it away. He gets, yeah, yeah. He gets Roman to drive a little bit while he leans out of the car, grabs the tail of the torpedo where the blade, where the rotors are, and slowly pivots it slightly towards some of the separatists, and they explode. <laughs> and of so, course, we get uh, the say, iconic line "Boo, baby!" from Tej. I have to say, it's a big crappy warhead if they didn't learn to explode after a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they weren't planning on doing anything with it at this point. They were just like, oh, we'll just let it go and be free. It's been locked up for years in this naval base. <laughs> be free, little torpedo. <laughs> Make a family of torpedoes, or a team of torpedoes, if you will. <laughs> and then we get a nice comedy shot of uh, Baby Marcus listening to music. 
whilst on the other half of frame, Decker's just beating up a guy. <laughs> yeah. While listening to Alf, listening to the chipmunks. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas time. <laughs> and now it's time for the submarine to pop out the ice. Now we're here. Let's talk <laughs> about the submarine. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> This whole franchise. I have, to, I have to admit, it's a lot of effort for something that's only in it for like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the cars fly everywhere. This is the Separatist. That's the end of the Separatist at this point. And Letty's almost crushed. Letty and Ramsey are stuck in their car and they're being eaten up by the ice. But she hits the nose. Just make it out of the way of the submarine, which then, you know, doesn't do much job. Because there's, Do- there's Dom, and he's in hardcore mode. You lost the minute you interrupted my honeymoon. Oh, yeah. That's right? sounded, but that sounded so wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Cypher launches a heat seeker. Dom, he's got fire heat. bursting out of his <laughs> engine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's he's got a he's going full Mad Max on that engine. Oh yeah. So he's using that. And he distracts the missile away from the team. He goes back around and he leaps over the submarine because him, Dominic Toretto leaping a car has always worked out. Oh yeah. Always, always worked out. Yes. If there's some, if there's any point where he's flying in the air, you know that he's going to land. <laughs> <laughs> what goes up comes down. Just you know, not always in the same piece. Safely and and remarkably, you know. Unhurt. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the, the, the safely and the, the remarkably unhurt is the name of the franchise. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the heat seeker then crashes into the submarine. And we just it's just all fire at this point. He leaps out of the car, the car starts crashing, the, the explosion's coming towards him. It's like, oh shit, is Don gonna die from fire? And then all the cars, all the family join up together to make a Voltron of shields. <laughs> Voltron of shields. <laughs> it's just all the cars surrounding yeah. in one big car shield. <laughs> <laughs> this moment is special. Yeah, it's like, it's, the cars are only a certain height. Well, yeah. It's not going to be like less than, I mean, six, less than six. Vin Diesel's not the tallest man in the world, but I mean, these cars, some of them. So oh. they're uh, kind of short. Yeah. So I was like, how are they going to make sure that the fire doesn't go in or, or around it? But I guess the best thing you can hope for is that it won't burn your hair off your eyebrows. Oh, that's, he, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, finally, we get to Cypher versus Deckard Shaw. De- Deckard Shaw, of course, is annoyed because uh, Cypher put his brother in the way of harm. Mm. So obviously this is the ultimate face-off. Yeah. So I don't use a gun to kill you. It's like, oh, how, but, oh, we also have to remember, how did we get there? How did they know about this plane? Shaw reveals that the necklace was there, and that was a tracker. Oh, oh the necklace has oh. again proved <laughs> important into the film. In every film, the necklace does yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. More screen time <laughs> yeah. than half the family. <laughs> Cypher, though, right? She shrugs. She's like, well, only one of us has a parachute. And she jumps out of the plane. Okay, I guess that's that then. They stuck on the ghost plane forever until it crashes, maybe? Looks like it. Looks like it. Oh, wait a second. Owens hasn't killed the pilots because he's not insane. It's like a time to land. Boyos. <laughs> probably, he probably reclaims the plane to replace the one that was destroyed in the previous film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not that big a plane by comparison. It doesn't need that big a runway. Yeah, but it's, yeah. You know, it's, you know, a ghost plane, so no one's going to notice it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Letty and Dom reunite. Roman takes a selfie. <laughs> of course. That's how this thing ends. It turns with, hey, it's classified, but Roman's got to take a selfie. <laughs> and then we're back to? Barbecue time. Well, uh, yeah, but where, where? We're not going to have barbecue in Russia. Yeah, where is it? I can't remember now. Oh, we in... Uh, let me say, I'm reading this. It's it's New York, and uh, follow up. The lights will make you feel brand new. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got a rooftop barbecue this time. 
Yeah. I have to admit that the rooftop is quite quite badass actually. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to hang out up there. Just you yeah, know, as long as there's no cars ready down. Although I have to admit, it's very it's quite um how they're not able to just get bad wind burn from the top of being on the top and of a roof. Oh, oh Katie, York. Katie, this is New York. You're thinking of Chicago. That's the windy city. Yeah, but it's still pretty damn high though. <laughs> I'm not going to be like, it's not as if there's no wind in New York. Oh, I'm pretty sure there's no wind in New York. Yeah, because all the winds in... All the winds in Chicago. All, all, all the winds in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. and all the, all the angels are, of course, in Los Angeles. Yep. Uh, anyway. One of the sleepers in New York. Because it's the city that never sleeps. Great, Sorry, great. Great. So Roman and Tej are trying to convince Ramsey that they should choose. She should choose one of them to go out with. <laughs> What's my last name then? What is her last name? Well, Tej believes it will be Parker. <laughs> right? Right? Because he's yeah. going to marry her. Yeah. But, you know. We don't know Ramsey's last name. I Mode. hope that becomes really important. I, I'm sure it will. I'm sure F9 the Far Saga. But like, Ramsey Toretto? <laughs> right? What, like a sibling or something? That's crazy. I don't know. I don't know they could ever do a sibling. Yeah. But we do have Mr. Nobody and Little Nobody arriving for the barbecue. <laughs> they go over to Luke Hobbs, who is hanging out definitely at the same barbecue as uh, Dominic Toretta. Definitely sharing the same set at the same time. And there's like, hey, you're, you're reinstated if you want it to. And he looks at his daughter. He's like, Daddy's staying home. <laughs> he milks that line. Yeah. You think, oh, the family's all here, right? There's one person missing. Almost. Yeah. Deckard's there and he brings Marcus to Dom. Oh. And he can't believe Dom went to see my mum. <laughs> <laughs> and now Letty meets baby Marcus. This is it. This is the family. This is the family finally united for the, for the first time in this whole film. Yeah. Meet Brian. <sighs> so sweet. So goddamn sweet. And then he says grace, and we peel out, looking over New York. And that's the fate of the Furious. In the Furious. I was kind of hoping you might have one last New York. But, uh... No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's your thing. That's all of our thing. <laughs> we all appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> F9, you mean? F9, you are. <laughs> You're right. So that's the Pain of the Furious. How do we feel? Exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> I it's mean, a yeah. Take in, but it really yeah. is. <laughs> but they're so damn good. I mean, they're ridiculous fun. Yeah. Also, no, it was the highest grossing. Worldwide opening of all time before Infinity War. Wow. So, mm. so I don't know. So you, you I don't know if you know this, but it's like the Fast and Furious films, they're big in China because they're not offensive. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't, unless you talk to John Cena recently. Yeah. But... <laughs> and then suddenly the second week of uh, release <laughs> dramatically dropped. <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, no. Um, Worldwide, big franchise. Mm -hmm. And rightly so, it's a beloved franchise. Yeah, it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how it, how it performs, yeah. uh, you, this new one. Yeah, well, you, you, you wouldn't have thought that when you watch Fast and Furious, the first film, you'd, you'd actually think they'll, they'll still keep doing it. Yeah, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> we've, 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 we've grown so much. And you think about you know, all the people at the uh, Cuba sequence who are dancing and excited and at the party for the race how old were they when vin diesel was doing his first street races for the fast and the furious <laughs> they probably known him from the pacifier or something like that wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> they probably knew him because of course they were hiring him for his babysitting skills after the pacifier <laughs> Oh, 
It's gone on for so long, this franchise. And yet it doesn't stop here. This is the fate of the Furious is that the Furious will still be fast, I guess. Yeah, I can't see how they're going to end because aren't they, isn't the plan to end after number 10? Theoretically 11. Oh, the t- Tarantino. 11. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wait. yeah, the, fast, the first Fast and the Furious came out in 2001, One. so we're 20 years yeah. later. Uh, <laughs> yes, we are. God, that <laughs> makes me feel ancient. <laughs> hey, hey it's, it's, it's 10 films in. In twenty years, yeah. So that's that's yet yeah, one every two years is is not a bad rate. At any it is a very consistent rate, and yes. and you know and considering that, um, Fast Nine was supposed to be in, yeah supposed to have been come out last year. What? Yeah, considering eight years ago, years F- ago, F Nine was meant to come out last year, and considering of course, what. Furious 7 was meant to come out in 2014. It was meant to be that a quick turnaround. And then something very big happened, which ruined the franchise kind of for a while. It survived. Mm. It survived and yeah. it's evolved. And uh, now we have Shari Thorne and Helen Mirren being in the films. Because I don't even know Shari Thorne is in the next one. Is in F9 The Fast Saga. Yeah, she's the only antagonist not to be uh, killed off or destroyed in some form or another. Or, or turned into family. Yeah. Yeah. That's the important part, or turned. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know if you know the thing about street fights, Johnny. The street, street always wins, and the family yeah. always gains a new family member. Family keeps on growing. Family keeps on growing. Big Will keeps on turning. <laughs> Katie, thank you for joining us. <laughs> thank you. Our face the furious. You're welcome. Have you got anything you can plug? Um, no, not really. <laughs> no? You're not going to Writing anywhere, anything worth talking about? Uh, well, um, Shiva Baby is a great comedy coming out on Mubi Nick, um, this week. So can't, try and catch it if you can. Great fam- feature film debut. Okay. Um, and that's, um, oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to In the Heights. In the Heights, I'll be covering that. Yes. Flick Feast. So I'm looking forward to that. My first press screening, physical press Yay. screening. Oh, in, wow. For over a year. So no, no, that'll be exciting, and it'll be great to watch it with a crowd. Yes, um, it's been first. My first trip to the cinema was in the Heights this year, and we covered it on the podcast a couple of weeks ago because this oh. is being recorded a couple of weeks in the future. Well, I'm, I'm excited to watch it because you know, uh, <laughs> love musicals, and I uh, love uh, John and Chu. So, love Lin Manuel Miranda as well. So, it's no, that'll be exciting. It's a perfect storm. Yeah, it'll be a great, it'll be a good night. It will be. It'll be a great night. Yeah, you'll look at the fireworks. <laughs> oh, watch out for them. <laughs> Johnny, got anything to plug while we're here? Uh, just musical month is still going on. It just happened. Finished. It's, it's still going on. Still going on. Musical it's still month. going on. We had In the Heights, I think, this week. Yep, I remember. Um, and obviously... Yeah, uh, we had In the Heights week. last week. We had... Uh... Gosh, it's very confusing. It was, it was rent this week. Yeah. We paid our rent this week. Um, and backstage at Bluebird every Friday, of course. Right. How about you? Have you got Letterboxd? Uh, I do. Movie Mad. How about you? Um, Katie, do you uh, have Letterboxd yeah. you want to promote? Sorry? Do you have your Letterboxd? Do you want to promote your Letterboxd? It'll be same on Twitter. It'll be Guitar Girl China. Well, there you go. I'm Ethan Runt and at Ethan Runt on Twitter. Easy to find. Of course, I am Movie Mad every month, every week. And Fast Fridays. We're keeping going because you think, hey, well, the Fate of the Furious is the last one leading up to it, right? Ah, right. The thing is, Fast and Furious, they gave us a present. Sorry, they <laughs> presented something. So even though, technically, this comes out the day that the F9 The Fast Saga comes out, we're going to go on one more extra week because that was when it was meant to come out. And Universal <laughs> kind of said, hey, we're going to release it a week early and pissed me off in the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so join us next week when uh, I get quite testy about Jason Statham and Dwayne Johnson. And Idris Elba is Brixton? What?